Welcome back, Chronics, and thanks for joining me. Today we're talking about the bladder. But first, I want to do a quick survey about the clips I add in to these videos. Do you like them? Do you not like them? Do you want more? Do you want less? I've gotten a few comments where some people have said it's very distracting, which is never my intention. I just want to express the information to you without crying. So I use really the clips just to soften, soften the blow for me, but that's selfish, so I can take them out. This is not about me. Let me know in the comments. I want you to be happy. I'm sure you're all going to be shocked to hear this, but women with hypermobile EDS are four times as likely to have incontinence problems opposed to, you know, regular healthy women. Four. Seriously? So they conducted a survey of women who have EDS and POTS. There was 22 of them, and out of 22, 20 had incontinence problems. Also, 14 of those also experienced bladder pain. So there are three groups that they can divide the bladder issues into. It's incontinence, so you're going to the bathroom too much, retention, you can't go to the bathroom, or pain. Then there's something called nocturia, which is having to go to the bathroom all night. Apparently, getting up more than two times to go to the bathroom in the night is not normal. I'm definitely getting up maybe six times. So I'm going to see a urologist next week and then try and explain how POTS and the neurogenic bladder are related and they connect. Hope that they don't throw stones at me and kick me out. These are all the tests that really should be run to get a full picture of what's going on with your bladder. In a survey of 200 women with EDS and confirmed urinary tract infections, when they do a urinalysis, apparently the bacteria can hide in the bladder walls. Because, of course, why wouldn't it? Only 10% of us actually come up with having the infection, opposed to 90% for, you know, like regular people. We can't win! There are three lines of therapy to treat bladder problems. They start with, and if that doesn't work, they'll give you one of these. These are the side effects. Nothing major. Most people go off the medication in six months of starting it, and by most people I mean 70%, which is a pretty high number. A bad? It's high. If you are not able to take the medication, there are other options other than surgery. Surgery may be needed if you have any kind of prolapse going on, but that is not always going to be the case. They can implant something called a neuromodulator, which is basically like a pacemaker for your bladder. Then there is a treatment called peripheral tibial nerve stimulation. Say that three times fast. And they insert an acupuncture-like needle in the tibia nerve, and you have that treatment for 30 minutes, usually once a week for about three months. But good news, who needs needles when there's all of this research pointing to electrical stimulation being just as effective. Here is a diagram about the placement of the TENS unit. And if all else fails, you can always Botox the bladder. Wait, what's Botox? Thank you for joining me, Chronix, on another episode of What Else Is Wrong With Us? It doesn't end. Remember? Don't give up, stay strong, and don't take crap from anyone. I will see you guys next time.